Hello and welcome to the review, the initial review of the Gotway M Super RS. Gotway RS is essentially a face lifted version of the Gotway M Super Pro. There are some subtle changes that can be pointed out initially. Let me grab an M Super Pro. As you can see, very, very similar. So you've got front headlights, same unit. There's a change, first time coming out. Before, it's always been like this, this layout. Now they've got a rubber cover, and underneath the rubber cover are two sort of dual ports, so you're capable of charging. It comes with standard, a three amp charge, you could double that up, six amp charging. And a USB port, so you can charge it twice as fast as previously. The other difference is, this one has a push button on the side. They've now transferred that to underneath the handle. So you've got a, when you pick it up, you've got the switch there, like you have on other models. This one you've got on the side. The other thing is the front lights have changed. So if we boot this up, and I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the LEDs essentially on the side. They're different. As you can see there, these are traditional model which have been on the, well, they've been on this, the M Super X, etc. for yonks. You can just about see them there. Um, let's just go through these lights so you can kind of see them. There you go. You can see the different patterns on there, basically, um, which run up and down here. Slightly different. Um, otherwise, pretty much externally, pretty much the same. This one has got speakers. The M Super Pro has got speakers on that side. It's got speakers on this side, but it's also got the addition of a grill on the other side, which this hasn't got. Um, so you've got the light there, etc., shining through. Copyright. So, won't play that much longer. Just to let you know, the speakers are just this side, even though there's these nice grills this side with the light shining through. Speakers this side. Decoration this side. You know, if you like that sort of thing, flashy lights and things like that. And it's kind of cool, I suppose, and it equals out the design. You've got it left and right from a design point of view, maybe. Uh, but there you go. So there are some subtle changes on the outside. So what mechanical changes are there? What have they done here in terms of battery and motor? So remember, this is the high-speed version. So the motor difference between the old high-speed version. Old? I mean, we just had a fresh delivery of the things in. They brought this out incredibly quick from the previous M Super Pro, which is still a current version. Um, we've got the high speeds in stock. There is a price difference. So this one's more expensive than the M Super Pro. Uh, with these updates, essentially, you take the cost for that. So the M Super Pro high speed version is 2000 watts motor. This one, high speed version, is 2600 watts of motor power. Battery, essentially the same. Nothing much changed there. Um, in terms of capacity, it's the same, so you're probably gonna get the same performance out of it. So 2,600 watts, but also a hollow motor. Uh, a bit like the Emotion V11 in that respect, it's got a hollow uh, motor as well. So there's a slight difference in design. Um, the top speed, they reckon, when you lift it, is 97 kilometers an hour. Now that's about 60 miles an hour. That is unladen though, so there's no way it's gonna reach that sort of speed when you're actually stood on it with all your weight. Uh, that's just a figure they put out there, like the range figure, they'll say that it'll do a huge amount of mileage, but when it comes to reality, it won't be that figure. Now, am I gonna test the top speed on this? No, I'm not, because I'm not an advocate of high speed riding due to the dangers that can be encountered um, through riding like that to other people and to yourself, but more importantly to other people if you have an off uh, or a failure, this thing's gonna go flying along um, at 50 miles an hour and smash into someone. It's just not, that's not, um, that's not conducive to actually getting these things legalized. So it will be riding sensibly. Um, so this is why we do the reviews, is to get a real life range. Out of the box, it does come with side pads and a three amp charger. So these little side pads are really, really thin. But if you wanted to put them on, it's not a requirement, but if you want to, you can stick them on the side, double back, sticky tape. Probably will stick them on for the purpose of this video. Uh, put them there. 
So if you're buying from us, it's most likely going to come with a UK plug because it's hardwired in. Now, obviously, you can already you can swap that out if you want to. It's for worldwide usage. Uh, most customers they use just a little cheap adapter, like a travel adapter, a few quid, plug it in, job done. When it's charging, you've got the LEDs which sit on the side here. So red is charging, green is charged. So let it run all the way through. It is fan cooled, this charger, because they can get warm. So you'll hear a fan noise when you're charging it. But you just basically plug it into the top, let it charge until it goes green. Job done, you're good to go. So I'm gonna head out on it. We've just gone through really the subtle changes that have taken place. It is more of a facelift model than anything. You've got 600 watts extra. You've got slightly different LED design around it. You've got the light on the side here. Speakers are the same, but you've got the double charge ports and the USB port under this rubber flap, the dual charge ports, which says 20 amp um, cutout on it. Um, so it's fused to 20 amp. Whether that can actually take 20 amps, I don't really know. Um, the standard chargers are three amps. So if you double it up, you've got six amps. So that's what I'm going by for now. I'm pretty sure you could put two five amp chargers on it if you wanted to. So if you've got the Sherman, I'm pretty sure you could use the five amp charger on that and double up to get 10 amp uh, if you want to charge it quickly. But as we all know, rapid charging these batteries is just gonna shorten the life. So if you can, stick with the three amp. If you really want to and you're on a, every now and again, you've got this long day ahead of you planned or you're out with your mates, then double up, get another three amp charger and stick it on um, and double your charge time. So, probably time for me to go out and uh, take it for a ride and see how I get on, see what range I get out of it and just feedback on its ride quality, etc. and anything else I find. Well, I've just been out on the range test and I have hooned this thing around and pushed it and played with it and thoroughly enjoyed it. So it came out the box with 30 PSI. Recommended pressures are between 35 and 45 PSI. So I pumped up to 40 PSI. Um, if you ever want to know about tire pressure, have a look on the side wall. It'll give you an indication of where you should be at. So anyway, I pumped up at 40 PSI and rode out from there. It is quite a weighty machine, um, but not because of this version. They're all pretty much the same when you've got 1800 watt hours. It does make it weighty. It's very, very compact, so it's controllable. So the, the whole body size is actually fairly small. When you stack it up against something like a V11, the size difference is quite significant. This looks small and it's not a small wheel. Um, so let's just head straight into this. So the handling on the road is spot on. Uh, with this tyre that we're all used to now, it's pretty much the same tread as, as most manufacturers are fitting to their wheels. It's like this cross-terrain tyre. It's no loud road noise. There's no rumble or anything like that. It just goes along. It handles the road fine. It handles the off-road fine. It grips plenty. It is summer, um, but I've ridden this tyre in winter. Um, and with this extra weight, it does dig in and plant it quite nicely. So having weight can be an advantage, especially when you're riding, which is kind of the main purpose of these things is to ride them, not carry them. Uh, trolley handle, they have changed the back slightly. It used to be a matte finish. It's now like a, it's a, it's a two-part plastic, which it was before, but shiny plastic, not matte plastic. 
Um, quite stiff in there though. So from that point of view, when I tried to pull out, I was like, yeah. So that was stiff in the back there and doesn't quite sit completely flush at the bottom, no matter how much you smack it. Uh, this port cover over all the rough terrain handled fine, didn't pop open. I was half expecting it to pop open, but as you can see, it's not the easiest thing to take apart. And so from that point of view, that's a good thing. So some rubber covers, Z10, I remember this happening as you go over bouncy terrain, it pops open and loosens up and falls out and over time it gets worse and worse and worse. That stayed in, no problem at all. Interesting thing with this is, you've got different light modes on the front, as you may remember uh, from previous videos or you may have seen them. This remembers your light setting, which is good and bad, depending on which way you look at it. I did the range test last night, so I was out in dark and I had the lights on. When I turned on this morning, just booted it up, the lights came on. I was like, okay, can't remember turning them on. And what it done, it remembered my previous light settings when it comes to the front light. Now, if you know about these wheels, if it's your first time looking, you will not, you have to cycle through. So let me give you an example. If you power it up, turn the headlight on, um, and if you only use it in evenings, this would be very useful. You turn off the wheel now. When you go out the following evening, if you turn it on, it remembers that your headlight's on. Um, so then you can cycle through, so you've got nothing. And turn it off, turn it on again, and it remembers that setting. Can you see something slightly off with that? I don't want rainbows, I want white. So to get back through to white again, you can either use the app, if you haven't got it on you, you will need to keep pressing this button. There we are, back where I were, where I was. Um, now it comes night time and I turn the light on. Yay, good stuff. But then if I turn that off, and turn it back on again, it will remember the light setting. As soon as I turn this light off, it will cycle through that, unless you use the app. So it's good in some ways, but not very useful in others. So in terms of comfort whilst riding, it's fine. It's got the we well-known foot plates now through the range, they've been using for quite a number of years. The color of them now is black, as it was on the M Super Pro. They made them black and they put them on a Nikola black as well. Um, nice big foot plates. I actually feel that they could be slightly bigger um, or you're gonna have to play around with some side pads of some description. So for the amount of power this machine's got, it's a 2,600 watt motor, which is just, which is just absolutely incredible, isn't it? Um, so from that point of view, you could do with utilizing that torque as much as possible. Now a longer foot plate will actually aid with that. So if your toes aren't hanging over the edge, you've got more leverage, um, or you can make that up by putting sort of cheap pads, I call them, or power pads, or boost pads, or whatever you want to call them, on the side so you can actually lean your shins into and get the maximum amount of torque out of the wheel. One thing I did notice is that when you stood still, the forward and back, no way really explaining this, but the forward and back motion of this wheel, it's like it's just on. Usually on wheels, you go forward, and then you go to go backwards and there's that little delay, it's only like a nanosecond of delay where it's going, oh, you wanna go backwards, let me just go and handle that for you and help you go backwards. With this, it's like, yeah, I'm on all the time. So it's like forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. It's like, just constantly on, there's no delay. Incredible, just like immediate power, forward and backwards. Not that you're constantly going forward and backwards, but it's something that I did note. Now I did the range test on it. I did it at about 27, 28 miles an hour constantly. So it was a big push for this thing. And it did 30 miles down to beeping. Not beeping while stationary, but beeping going any sort of speed. So at the very last couple of percent, it brought my speed right down and it was tilting me back. No one wants to ride under those conditions. So at those points now I stop the tests because there's no point in running it right to flat because you're not gonna wanna ride around like that for any length of time because it's beeping away at you and it wakes everyone up. 
Um, so from that point of view, it did 30 miles about with my riding gear on, which is the motorcycle trousers, my armor top, my jacket, stuff, about 90 kilograms um, at night time. So lights on, lights on the whole time, 30 miles I got out of it. You could definitely get more out of this machine. This is kind of like the worst case scenario, about 12 degrees, um, about 30% off road approximately, 70 road um, and different climbs and drops, etc. So. It was pushed hard, and so I'd expect that to be the minimum, unless you weigh more. You know the game with the uh, range on these things, I suspect, by now. Rear light, nice and bright, especially if you put it on the mode I had, which is white on the front and then red strips down the back along with the brake light. You can choose to have all the flashy lights off, so you can just have an off mode and just use the headlight and the rear light. Um, and of course, as you're pulling back, it breaks, so the red light comes on nice and bright. So those things, you're really, really visible on the road. This front light, just pushed out a lovely beam, uh, nice and wide and far, so you're able to see well ahead of you um, for where you're going. Probably a little bit much for oncoming traffic. I had no one flash or shout at me or beep an horn or anything like that, so perhaps not, but it just looks as though it could be quite intrusive from that point of view. But in terms of your own riding and your own safety and being able to see where you're going, this spot on. There was never a time where I had to dial the speed right back because I could not see where I was going. Um, really, really bright. Yeah, spot on from that point of view. Uh, speakers, don't ever really play music out of them. Um, I had Matt my ride running, tracking the route, and that was reading out the mileage. Yeah, all right. I don't listen to music because no one, rest assured, no one else likes your own music when you, you're riding a wheel. They just think it's awful. Um, and so from that point of view, I basically didn't really test them that much, but there are speakers, yes. Um, so switch, handy. Yeah, handy. It also means that you can then fit a seat to this um, without intruding on the button. So the previous version, you had to cut a little little cutout on there uh, if you so wish to have a seat. Again, not something I really recommend that much riding around, sat down. But you can get the seats for them. Uh, I'll go and show you what that looks like now. Bing! There is the seat fitted. Doesn't it blend in nicely? It's like it's been designed to fit. Um, so yeah, that sits on there. You've got access to all this stuff. It's not intrusive. So if you want to get a seat, they're on speedyfeet.co.uk. Go there, grab a seat. Fits on really, really simply. I mean, if you had a crash, it would come off. So, but obviously you're supposed to be sat on it. Um, it's enough to stay on there when you're riding. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's the seat. Side pads, not the most comfortable. That wafer thin. Side pad does not really a lot. What it does is it adds a bit of traction so you don't slip on a smooth plastic shell. You actually grip into it. So really it's more, not for comfort, but for grip so you can get that bit of extra torque out of the machine. But you're gonna hurt your calves unless you're used to riding an M Super. Now I've been on the KSS 18, on the Sherman and the V11 as my last wheels doing a thousand kilometers on each of those. So I've done two and a half thousand kilometers so far because I'm halfway through the V11 thousand kilometers. Um, so my calves have not had the pleasure of being uh, enhanced, should we say, uh, with, yeah, toughness on the sides. So this here, if you're not used to riding it, will hurt, it's conditioning. So once you're conditioned, it'll be absolutely fine. I used to ride these all the time um, and never used to get any calf problems at all. It's the same thing. So conditioning, but don't expect to put these on and go, oh, lovely softness. Ain't gonna happen. Um, so from that point of view, no failures, nothing to report whatsoever. You need to, um, ideally, if you wanna mess around with this, you're gonna have to use the Gotway app. Now the interesting thing with that is the Gotway app has got the tilt back functions, and this is worth mentioning. So you can set your speed that you want the wheel to tilt back. It only goes up to 48 kilometers an hour on the app. So I don't know if they're gonna change that, but that's basically 30 miles an hour, it's just short of 30, but 30 miles an hour. So the tilt back cuts in, but I got it to 31.5 and it tilted in on the, I used darkness bot to measure my speed and it showed the max speed is 31.5 uh, and it tilted back. Very calm and collected tilt back, nothing scary, didn't jolt me back, nothing like that. But on the app, on the Gotway app, that's all you can set it to. now would not recommend turning off tilt back because really the only way that you can then do it is by turning off tilt back entirely 
So you go up to 48 and then you can choose to turn it off. With these machines, when you've got a full face helmet on, etc., and you're getting up to maximum speed, this will do, I think, a beep at 80% power. I think it's 80% power. To warn you, your age of empire, you definitely need to stop what you're doing because you're going to have a serious accident at any point because it's going to cut off. Obviously, it would be nice to have tilt back before that point, but you can't set it to that. So you can set it at 48 or turn it off. I don't recommend turning it off um, because once you've got full face helmet on, you can't hear the beeps because of the wind and the faster you go, the more wind noise. Uh, so you can't hear the beeps. So you're waiting to feel what the wheel's doing. And if the tilt back's turned off, you can't tell. So it might be, and there's a lot, I've seen a lot of this going on where people have heard them going by and it's beeping at them thinking, what the heck? And some videos are actually saying it's beeping, but they just can't hear. Can't hear it's beeping and tilt back's been turned off. And then a little bit, a little while later, they're sprawled across the street uh, because they had no recognition of that fact that it's off and they couldn't hear it. And so you keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and then overpower the wheel. So don't recommend turning it off. Maximum so far on the app is 48. That's, I mean, come on guys, that's 30 miles an hour. So should be enough. So that's it. That is the unboxing and range test done on the RS High Speed by Gotway. And next up will be the 250 kilometer review, followed by the 650 kilometer review, followed by the 1000 kilometer final review on this wheel. If you haven't already, go over to electricpeople.org, sign up there. This is where the latest news comes from, from us and several other people, they post on there. Um, it's a great site, it's away from Facebook, etc. You can see a single point of contact for all things electric, with electric propulsion basically is the idea. So if you've got an EV in terms of a car, then you can post up there um, all sorts and have a chat about it, bikes, anything goes really. Um, and of course, electric unicycles prominently displayed there and that's pretty much who's on there is, is wheel riders. So go to electricpeople.org, post up your videos, your pictures. People are genuinely really interested in what you're doing. And we're all from around the world, so we've seen photos from Norway and all sorts, really nice photos where people ride. So go and add up your stuff there. It's really interesting to see what you guys are up to. And it's a place that we go as a first point of contact, really. So we get something new in like this. The first place it went up was electricpeople.org, saying, look what we got in. Um, so yeah, we got this over rapid. We wanted to get the hands on as quick as possible to give you the details on it. So this is the high speed version of the wheel. Absolutely solid ride. So looking forward actually to the remainder um, of my thousand kilometer test with it. And I haven't crashed it yet. Isn't that good? Foot plates, not got a mark on them. We'll see if we can keep that up at the thousand kilometers. But like, subscribe and comment below if you need any information, I can try and help in some way, then job done. Oh, charging, maximum 10 amps. I did ask Gotway about this because in the spec sheet we've got, it says 10 amp, I think it's fused to 20 amp or something. And it was, a bit, it was like, mm, I don't know really sure what you mean by that. Recommended 10 amp maximum. So it comes with a three amp charger, but you could swap out, like I was saying earlier, with two five amps and you can charge it 10. Wouldn't recommend doing that long term, but get two three amp chargers. So it comes with a three amp, get another one charging at six. It's more than enough, isn't it? So you can get five and a three. That'll be fine as well. Um, so there we go, all available on speedyfeet.co.uk. At this point in time of filming this, we've only got two left of the high speed version in stock. So if you wanna grab one, there's gonna be a wait on the rest of them arriving. So if you wanna grab one, grab it now and look at the date of this video, because obviously this is only relevant for when this is live. Um, the other ones are probably six to eight weeks out from arriving. So small window of opportunity to grab two fresh off the production line. Uh, this one is performed flawlessly with all new wheels. We do these tests. Every single one I get on them and go, is this going to be any good? Is it going to cut out? Because you never quite know because they're so fresh and new. Um, and so far, all of them have been okay. So we've never had that. This pushed it, pushed it hard. Um, yeah, impressed with this so far. So I will report back though how we get on over the next few miles. So I will see you guys later and I'll probably see you on electricpeople.org. See you later.